Smith, who have come from YouTube in New York. And uh, they're going to treat you to the workshop, and then following that, uh, a reception upstairs with uh, drinks. So I'm trying to take channels and work with them so that they grow audience organically in a way that's sustainable. So if anyone here uploads the next great cat playing the keyboard video, um, hopefully I take that and I build it into a sustainable channel, not just a one-hit wonder. Because um, I'm sure everyone here can do a viral video. We'll talk about more of that later. But getting something that's weak week to week and you're having people show up regularly is really important. That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, Brandon, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, so I'm Brandon Gross. I work with Andres on the Next Lab. Uh, I'm actually a programming strategist. Uh, what that means, I think about it in, in terms of uh, we, we work with creators and bring a little bit of science of YouTube to the creativity uh, that the creator has to offer. So we work with creators and channels on actually the nature of their content. So you know we, we help them structure things around serial content, uh, one-offs, but we'll go definitely more into depth. Uh, but definitely blending art and science. That's how I like to think about it. So we thought we'd add little pieces of interaction throughout this whole thing. So first off, actually, I just heard that some of you were at Banff. Did any of you hear me speak there? OK, I'm really sorry, because I'm going I'm to say that almost the same stuff. Hopefully, it's a little different cadence. Maybe we changed up some video examples. But you're going to get a lot of the same stuff. Brandon has some new takes that you'll see, so hopefully you stay with us. And then you can ask me a bunch of questions you didn't get to ask upstairs. Second thing, um, how many of you guys have a YouTube channel or manage one? OK, so I'd say what, like 80 90%, right? Um, how many of you are YouTube partners and that you monetize the video views that you get? OK, plus. Um, we'll talk more about how to become a partner later, if that's interesting to you. Um, I also want to know if you were to describe, how many of you would describe your content as scripted? Scripted content. OK, about half. All right, so for the, the other people in the room, um, I know this is kind of putting people on the spot, but like, can you call out sort of what, besides scripted, what else is there? So what are you guys doing? Food blog. Food blog. Movie trailers. Say it again? Movie trailers. Okay, movie trailers. Short documentaries. Short documentaries. Uh, you said when it's scripted, it was kind of... Hey, yeah, it's kind of in the middle. Kind of in the middle. Yeah, half, a little bit of it scripted, yep. Improv comedy, which I was just in. Oh, no, no, that's not scripted. Yeah, it's good. Um, Unboxing videos. Oh, unboxing. I used to work at Ungadget. Okay, nice. Okay, cool. <laughs> Say it again. Interviews. Interviews. Okay. Video videotaping activists. Okay, great. So there's a good range here. All right, that's awesome. Um, so you're already way ahead of the Banff, Banff folks. You know, like I think that a lot of people there were just kind of getting into YouTube. You guys are more advanced. So I, we're going to try and reflect that when we present, but I want you guys to ask us lots of really hard questions at the end and also the next hour after this. Um, I'll let Brandon introduce himself again. Yes, yeah, so Soft is going to be a little basic, so definitely you know put us to the test at the end. Um, but um, so yeah, if, if anybody recognizes this scene, South Park fans out there, um, yeah, I, basically, I, I was carpet at one point, uh, playing World of Warcraft. Not literally, but the equivalent was actually just immersing myself in YouTube. Um, what that means is, you know, you have the product, which is really nuanced. If, you know, you guys pr pretty much know. I mean, most of you are already on YouTube. Um, and it's got, got a lot of interesting details about how it functions, very different than many platforms. Um, on one side, and then you actually have the creator communities, which if you have not spent any time on YouTube, you'd know, uh, you wouldn't know actually how, just how diverse the creators are. Um, so at one point what I did literally is lock myself in a room and I watched YouTube hours and hours and hours of videos. I started at the top uh, of the creators that, you know, if anybody will talk about did stats X maybe later in the presentation, but literally the top subscribe channels and work my way down. So um, I highly recommend for anybody, even if you've been on YouTube, been doing your own thing, um, Know, learn your vertical, know everybody that's in it, and then branch out and see what everybody else is doing. Because the way that this, uh, this platform evolves, and it is evolving so rapidly, uh, is by creators pushing other creators to do different things. So I urge you all, please you know, spend time. And throughout this presentation, we're going to reference different, uh, different channels, different videos, and we'll, we'll have some links in there so you can, you can check everything we reference. So if we go by too fast, don't worry. Uh, 
great. Okay, so I essentially had the same experience Brandon did, but in 2007 with a company called Next New Networks, which was acquired by YouTube. And at Next New Networks, what we wanted to do was uh, basically create the next generation of cable channels. And we learned that the audience for those were really on YouTube. So we had a do-it-yourself fashion show, do-it-yourself filmmaking show. We did some comedy. We had also, uh, a daily car news show. And at first, before we started having all this programming, really the idea was what's out there in terms of serial content. I started in October 2006. And uh, so YouTube was, I think, had just been acquired by Google. And um, there are a couple other players, Blip TV, uh, still, still rock and roll, and they're, they're great folks, and a few other guys. And we're basically just watching all the serial content out there. So I found some interesting things that in 2007 you may not be able to sort of say is serial. Um, we have Phil DeFranco, Ryan Higa, and Smosh. So they're just starting out. Um, are you guys from, have you guys heard of, of these three folks? Okay, yeah. Phil DeFranco, I'm going to pick on a little bit uh, in the next couple slides. So right now these guys have between two and five million subscribers. Um, I list the first upload date. I think Phil's is wrong because he was so embarrassed by his first uploads he deleted them. So I think that that's actually earlier in 2006. Um, Smosh, amazingly, six months after YouTube launched, they had already started uploading there. Um, and let's just pick on Phil for a second. I'm going to play a quick video clip. This is December 2006. <laughs> Let me try again. Let's do that again. Today, I want to discuss the top 10 ways to get out of something that you said that you regret or you don't want to get in trouble for. So here we go. So, huh? All right. So, yeah. <laughs> He's, he's, he's trying to figure it out, right? So let's take a look at Phil today. Hello, welcome back to 20 Minutes or Less. I'm Lee Newton. I'm Elliot Morgan. Whoa. Lee, I have some news that you're not going to want to hear. Adam Carolla, you know, uh, Adam, the man show Corolla. Adam, I have no idea what he does now. Corolla is getting press as of lately because he was quoted telling the New York Post, dudes are funnier than chicks. If my daughter has a mediocre sense of humor, I'm just going to tell her, be a staff writer for a sitcom because they'll have to hire you. They can't really fire you and you don't have to produce that much. It'll be awesome. How are you doing, Lee? I'm great. Continue. All right. So now I think you'll notice one thing. Phil DeFranco is nowhere to be found in this video. He has a production company and he's hiring other people to do videos for him and they're getting funded by YouTube. So how in the world in five years he went from that video to this? Um, my main takeaway from this is that two things. First, audience takes a lot of time. So if you guys are thinking about getting to a million subscribers, it's not going to happen in a year. There are always exceptions to this rule, and I hope that somebody in here is the exception, but generally it's a long, slow go of things. Um, the second is keep evolving. So YouTube as a platform in 2006 is totally different than it is right now. I don't think annota annotations did not exist. Um, you know, playlists, if they existed, they were really rudimentary. Lots of stuff on the platform just kind of occurred in the last two or three years. And you guys have to be at the forefront of figuring out first what those features are and then using them to, the, you know, coming up with new ways to use them that the person who actually coded it had no idea that that could be used that way. Annotations is a great example we'll talk about later. So in this presentation, it's kind of broken into three different groups. Your programming, your audience, and your platform. So with your programming, I think a lot of you right now have a good sense of what you want to do. We, we're just going to talk about kind of the ideas out there and sort of what's been working on the platform, um, how you can rinse and repeat some ideas. Also, just as a general note, I always say don't try and come up with an idea just for audience sake. Do something you love to do first. And then if that doesn't work, find something else that you love to do, but never try and pander to the audience too much because then you won't have any fun. I think the first thing is that if you're going to be uploading videos for years upon years, you are going to have to have fun doing it, otherwise you'll go a little bit insane. So your audience, who are you reaching? How do you reach them? How do you interact with them? How do you talk to them? Who's doing a good job? How are they doing that? What are the benefits of doing that? And uh, how does that come back in terms of viewership and uh, increased audience later on? And then the platform. So this is the nitty gritty stuff of I've uploaded the video and now what? Like, did I use the right title? Did I use the right tags? Is my description right? Does my thumbnail look OK? Am I putting it into a playlist? Am I sending it to the right blogs? Et cetera, et cetera. So, how many of you guys have heard of the YouTube Playbook? 
I love to show hands. Everybody's a little bit less enthusiastic now, but like 10%, is that about right? Okay, so you guys, it's free. We came out with a new version. Um, you can go find it at youtube.com slash playbook. It's essentially my group audience development along with the programming strategist and everyone in the next lab. We put together our best practices in the one nice slick looking document and we put it out there. We try to keep it updated every six to 12 months or so and another update's coming out soon. Um, as you guys probably know, YouTube keeps changing so our best practices keep changing too.